are not mentioned in this budget, sir. Three words. Railways, minimum support price for farmers, and Manrega. Why does, has the finance minister not mentioned these three words? Fundamental to the real people of India. Manrega, railways, and the minimum support price. I propose as a solution. Sir, hatred, religious hatred, is bad for the economy. Religious hatred cannot produce growth. Recent orders were given to deny livelihoods to people on the basis of food habits. This Supreme Court has struck it down, but India can only provide jobs when we build social harmony. Joblessness is very high among the disadvantaged communities, among Dalits, among Muslims, other privileged groups. Joblessness is skyrocketing. There is nothing in this budget that provides an assurance that the government of India is standing by India's most disadvantaged citizens. There is nothing in this budget. This brings me to my fourth inequality trap, the inequality of wealth and income. The government talks of competition, but we only have oligarchy. We have a booming airline industry, but two operators of note. Over a billion mobile subscribers, but only three telecom companies. Sir, the rich have lavish celebrations. The rich have lavish weddings, lasting days, but only 50% Indians can afford three square meals. Yeah. We are at 142 out of 197 in per capita income. The biggest catastrophe of this government, sir, has been the systematic destruction of the MSME sector. According to the government's own data, more than 35,000 MSMEs have closed down since the COVID pandemic. Srimati Sagarika Ghos. 15 minutes. So the mic. Thank you, Honorable Chairman, sir. I rise to speak on behalf of my party, All India Trinamool Congress, on the union budget presented by the Honorable Finance Minister. Honorable Chairman, sir, inequality, inequality, inequality. This is the fundamental crisis facing our country today. This inequality crisis has not been addressed by this budget, nor has it been addressed by the previous 10 budgets of this government. The government is constantly telling us it is pushing us into more and more growth, but it is pushing us into more and more inequality. This government is pushing us into the inequality trap, what I call the inequality trap. Sir, the Paris-based World Inequality Lab has said in its 2024 report that India's billionaire Raj has replaced the British Raj. The billionaire Raj has replaced the British Raj. India is more unequal now than it was in the 1920s, in the colonial period. Honorable Chairman, I want to repeat that. India in 2024 is more unequal than it was under colonial rule in the 1920s. That is the catastrophe of inequality facing us. That's why budgets need to be about real people, real India, real issues, not about fantasy land, not about Disneyland. Here are some facts about inequality, sir. The top 1% of India controls 40% of the country's wealth. Real earnings of regular salaried and self-employed have declined or remained stagnant. The Honorable Finance Minister claimed that GST has benefited the common man. But sir, the truth is 67% of GST is paid by the poorest 50% of India. Shame. Shame, shame. India is a country where 800 million people sir, still depend on free food. The budget needed to ch challenge, needed to address this inequality trap, it needed to tackle the inequality trap, it has failed to do so. I want to present five examples of the inequality trap. The first, the inequality trap with regard to states. The second, the inequality trap with regard to rural areas. The third, the inequality trap with regard to jobs. The fourth, the inequality trap with regard to wealth and income. And the fifth, the inequality trap with health and education. The states. First, the inequality trap on states. So this is a union budget meant for 28 states, eight union territories. Yet the specific focus on Andhra Pradesh and Bihar 
shows that this government is looking to appease its newfound allies. Look at the allotments made for Andhra Pradesh, the allotments made for Bihar, the huge financial package for Andhra Pradesh. We wish the people of Bihar and Andhra Pradesh the best. But can you discriminate against some states and make special provision only for two states simply because you have forged a coalition with these states at the center? This is the same government, sir. I have to remind you, this is the same government that went back on its promise of special status for Andhra Pradesh and Bihar. Now, for political convenience, the government is bestowing largest on these states. This unequal, this unequal allotment is against constitutional democracy. It is constitutionally immoral. It is ethically repugnant. It is economically ruinous. This is not cooperative federalism. This is discriminatory federalism. The finance minister talked about Purvoday. Look east, act east. But what is the government doing in the largest state of eastern India? Bengal is under siege. Bengal is facing an economic blockade. Bengal has not received Narega funds since December 26, 2021. Bengal has not received Narega funds. A massive over one lakh crore is due from the center to Bengal. The, the FM talked about PM Avas Yojana, but for Bengal, funds have been withheld under the PM Avas Yojana for 11 lakh sanctioned homes. 7,000 crore, 7,000 crore has been withheld from Bengal under the National Food Security Act simply because the center wants certain pictures and logos on those, uh, on those, uh, on those centers. Why this economic siege of Bengal? It's not just Bengal, sir. My friends from the DMK are here. It's about Tamil Nadu. It's about Karnataka. It's about Kerala. My friends from the uh, Shiv Sena Uddhav Thakare faction are here. It's about Maharashtra. Every citizen, whether from Manipur to Maharashtra to Punjab to Kerala, has equal rights to the funds of the government of India. Why is the federal spirit being compromised? What is needed, sir? I want to make a suggestion. What is needed is a time-bound, transparent audit of all the centrally sponsored schemes of the center. Will the government give an assurance to this house of a transparent, time-bound audit of all centrally sponsored schemes across states? Second example of the inequality trap. What is this? Second example of the inequality <laughs> trap. The inequality <laughs> trap in the rural areas. So when, when the government is asked about a legal guarantee for minimum support price, the government's economic manager says this will hold on. cost 17 lakh crore. <coughs> honorable no member, viability concerns honorable member, I, no I urge the parliament to control his member. This is not the way to run. Please take your seat. This is not the way. Why are you interrupting? Sir, no viability. Why are you interrupting? I don't appreciate interruption. This will not happen. It will not happen from either side. Please go ahead. She is making her point. Sir. And, and it's a well prepared speech. We may agree, we may not agree. Go ahead. Sir, when, when, Lord. when, uh, when the government is asked about the legal guarantee for the minimum support price, the government's economic manager says we can't do this, it will cost 17 lakh crore. But what about the fact that in 2019, the government gave corporate India a tax relief of 1 lakh, 1 lakh crore losses per year? So the Home Minister is urging people to... Uh, invest in the stock market, but the poor laborer in Bengal waiting for his Narega wages does not get his Narega wages. No practical step has been taken in this budget to make agriculture buoyant. Allocations to agriculture and allied sectors have been reduced to only 3.15% of the total budget. Subsidies on fuel, food and fertilizers have been slashed. No permanent structure has been created for debt relief for the farmers. When farmers agitated for a uh, minimum support price, the government refused to dialogue with them. Sir, do you know, Honorable Chairman, sir, that just this year, this year alone, 1,200 farmers in Maharashtra have committed suicide. They have lost their lives. Why does the finance minister not recognize this reality? 
Today, in spite of the Jal Jeevan mission hype, 22.5% of rural households only have access to piped water within their plot and yard throughout the year. The third example, sir, of the inequality trap, jobs and unemployment. It's taken 10 years for the government to wake up to the reality of unemployment. That Amrit Kaal and Viksit Bharat cannot happen without Rozgar. In this speech, the Honorable Finance Minister mentioned employment 23 times. In 23-24, she had mentioned employment just three times. At last, she has mentioned the word employment. This is what a reba from the voter can do. Since the 2020 lockdown, millions have lost jobs, but the government is in a sub si mindset. The internship and skilling program is simply not good enough. It is way too inadequate. It does not address the scale of the problem. A centrally sponsored scheme for providing paid internship opportunities in 500 top companies or some rupees as benefits to first-time employers Employees is pure advertising and tokenism. It is not going to solve this mammoth problem of unemployment. So 42% of graduates under the age of 25 can't find a job. The youth make up 80% of India's unemployed. This year, as the Honorable Member Mr. P. Chidambaram also said, 47 lakh applied for 60,000 constable jobs. 27,000 applied for 600 jobs in Air India. There has been no massive push on education to make sure that money is pumped into education without which lakhs of Indians will remain unemployed. Sir, hatred, hatred, religious hatred is bad for the economy. Religious hatred cannot produce growth. Recent orders were given to deny livelihoods to people on the basis of food habits. This Supreme Court has struck it down, but India can only provide jobs when we build social harmony. Joblessness is very high among the disadvantaged communities, among Dalits, among Muslims, other privileged groups. Joblessness is skyrocketing. There is nothing in this budget that provides an assurance that the government of India is standing by India's most disadvantaged citizens. There is nothing in this budget. This brings me to my fourth inequality trap, the inequality of wealth and income. The government talks of competition, but we only have oligarchy. We have a booming airline industry, but two operators of note. Over a billion mobile subscribers, but only three telecom companies. Sir, the rich have lavish celebrations. The rich have lavish weddings, lasting days. But only 50% Indians can afford three square meals. We are at 142 out of 197 in per capita income. The biggest catastrophe of this Government, sir, has been the systematic destruction of the MSME sector. According to the government's own data, more than 35,000 MSMEs have closed down since the COVID pandemic. How does the government intend to address the income gap when those who are the most vulnerable to changing economic tides are the least protected? What protection is there in the M for MSMEs in this budget? None. There has been no change or relief on the 45-day payment rule, which is hurting MSMEs that is, as it is leading to cancellation of orders. Other than a sketchy sentence on rationalizing GST rates, no specific measure has been outlined in this budget for the revival of MSMEs. To, uh, what stops the government from cushioning MSMEs the way it is cushioning India's top corporates? Incomes will not rise until the unorganized sector is given the greatest, the top, the foremost priority. Prioritize the unorganized sector now. Do it now. To add to the woes of the ordinary citizens, sir, the budget has abolished the benefit of indexation, which now means a huge tax burden on all assets acquired before 2001. The burdens of real people have only increased Wage earners and salary taxpayers have been given little relief. Three words are not mentioned in this budget, sir. Three words. Railways, minimum support price for farmers, and uh, Manrega. Why does, has the finance minister not mentioned these three words? Fundamental to the real people of India. Manrega, railways, and the minimum support price. I propose as a solution, I propose a dignity index. Let the government create a dignity index to measure how many are living a life of dignity and aim to create an economy where the, fifth, where the 
maximum number can live a life of dignity. So the inequality trap is my fifth inequality trap of health and education. Stagnating or declining allocations to health and education. Health at 1%, education hovering around 2%. In this budget, health and education allocations have only gone down. So a shocking statistic for you. The UNICEF has said that India is the second largest country with zero vaccinated children. In, in uh, 2023, 1.6 million children did not receive any vaccine at all. One, a UNICEF report says India is the second largest country of zero vaccinated children. On education, the state of education reports us says that 25% of 14 to 18 year olds, so 25% of 14 to 18 year olds cannot read class two texts. An 18 year old cannot read a class two text. That is the reality of education. The budget shows no awareness of this demographic disaster that is threatening to take over our demographic dividend. So Amartya Sen has said economic development cannot be sustained without an educated and healthy workforce. A budget is much more than just numbers. A budget should reflect the ideals of this August House. This August House reflects the ideals of the constitution of dignity and equality of all. Yes. In Bengal, we are respecting dignity, but the government is not. The government needs to wake up from its bubble and smell the coffee, or rather the chai, but without sugar, because Indians cannot afford sugar. So we were wanting a budget for the people. We have got a budget for the privilege. The, this budget, the budget of 2024, remains trapped in the inequality trap. Thank you, sir.